you clicked on this video because you can't quite figure out how to scale your Facebook ads profitably. I'm here to share with you the real reason you can't scale your Facebook ads and the three frameworks that I've used personally to sell hundreds of millions of dollars in e-commerce sales using Facebook ads. But before we jump into it, I wanna make one thing clear. Chances are your Facebook ads aren't broken. Your business is. The math's pretty simple. If you're getting a $20 CPM and a 1% click-through rate, you're gonna be paying about $2 per click. To get a thousand clicks, it's gonna cost you $2,000. If your conversion rate is 2%, you're going to get 20 sales off a thousand clicks. And if you have an average order value of $50, $2,000 in ad spend is gonna spit out $1,000 in revenue or a 0.5 ROAS. And I'm pretty sure we both know that if you don't have some crazy extended lifetime value, this is not going to be a scalable model for your e-commerce business. So enter the three frameworks. There are three core frameworks that you're gonna be able to leverage in your business that are going to allow you to fix the things that are wrong, fix your business, and make it so that you can really lean in to Facebook ads to scale. So the first lever or framework that you wanna to use to correct your business is conversion rate optimization. You've probably heard this beat around like crazy in the last couple of years, but it's true. If you can increase your conversion rate from two to 3%, that's making your website or your landing page or whatever work 50% harder on the same traffic. That means you're getting a 50% better output provided your average order value stays the same and your cost per click stays the same traffic. 2% is, is, is a, a fairly decent baseline for AOVs around the $50, $50 mark. There are lots of brands that are doing five and 6%, even as high as 10%, probably more of an anomaly from Facebook traffic. But even just getting the 3% can give you such a huge bump if you're only seeing 2%. So how do we get there? The first thing that I always wanna do when I'm looking at a brand is I wanna know, do they have proper product market fit and are they using the right value propositions when they're communicating with the customer? What I mean by product market fit is like, are you talking to the right person? Do you have the right people in your creative that represent the people that you're speaking to? If, if you sell a stress reducing pill for people, how much better could you speak to your avatar if you were talking about a stress reduction pill for breastfeeding moms or a stress reducing pill for new parents who aren't getting enough sleep, how you communicate to somebody is going to make it feel whether that product is directly for them. So the first thing I like to do is like run some ads around very specific customer avatars talking specifically to their pain points so that we can make it feel like their product is right for them. You obviously need to make sure that the market is large enough and that uh, there's a big enough demand that you can scale to where your business goals are. But even if you discover that say breastfeeding moms perform better and that market isn't large enough, you can test other avatars as well. And once you've maxed out one, move on to the next, create specific ads and specific landing pages for that person. So that's the first thing. The second thing, and I see this a lot, is people or advertisers send everybody to the same page. They send everybody to the PDP or they send everybody to an educational landing page, which is, you know, it's going to hurt conversion. People who are most aware are gonna be more likely to respond to PDPs and, and I said PDP, I mean product description pages, and to specific offers like buy to get one free or like a, a page that has a bunch of products, collection pages, things that pages where they don't need to be sold a bunch in order to make a purchase. If somebody's ready to buy, send them somewhere that's extremely easy to buy with buy boxes. If somebody has less overall awareness, like say they're, say they're uh, 
in the product aware stage where they are aware of your product, they just need more objection, objections busted to get them over the hump. You wanna send them to either a PDP with a bunch of social proof and objection busting or to a landing page. But if you send those people to a landing page where you're talking about the original problem and how your product is going to make their life so much easier, that's not necessarily the right place because those consumers are already aware that you solve the problem. They're already aware of other solutions. They know that you exist and they just need to be convinced that your product is the right one to solve their problem. If they're solution aware, you may want to send them to a landing page that's a little bit more benefits focused. What outcome is going to be different for them than somebody who's lower down the funnel? Making these pages specifically for the right level of awareness is going to allow you to send your ads that talk to those segments to the right places. It might sound complex when you're, when you're, when you're hearing me talk about it right now, but if you're spending a ton of money on ads, you wanna make sure that you're putting the right information in front of the right people. And then the lowest hanging fruit, and this is where most people start with conversion rate optimization, is like surface level things on the landing pages or the PDPs. It can be things like adding urgency, adding scarcity, busting common objections tied to potential risks that they may, may be taking by buying your project. Again, those are time, identity, money, energy, and reputation. So making sure that you check all those boxes, where the product might be shipping from, providing, you know, some people think that everything is gonna be coming from China. They don't want to have something drop shipped. So knowing that they can receive their product in a couple of days from a location near where they live is going to probably convince somebody to take action quicker than expected delivery in three weeks. If you want a whole bunch of different ideas. I've actually made two other videos, one that's $100 million landing page template, one that uh, gives you a bunch of different ways to increase your uh, conversion rate as well as AOV. I'll link them down below in the description. I don't need to rehash all of that content. It's there. There's lots of little tweaks that you can do today to improve your conversion rate. The next lever or framework in this series is simply increasing your average order value. Using the metrics above that I, from the very beginning of this video, if you had a $50 AOV with the other metrics, you'd be landing at somewhere around $1,000 output on a $2,000 spend or about 0.5 ROAS. You can double your AOV. I am gonna repeat that. You can double your AOV. A friend of mine named Russ, we were doing some things together and one of the things that he was able to do on a $27 product was to push his average order value from $27 to as high as 119 at one point. And he did this using two core things. First of all, he did something that I call volume incentivization. Basically, if it's something that's consumable, like a supplement, a food, a cleaning product, whatever it is, when you present the product, you offer it in multiple sizes. Supplement companies have been doing this forever. You can usually get like, a one month supply, a three month supply, or a year, or some combination of those, maybe it's six months, but they always present the largest bundle as the absolute best value. This is a no brainer for massively increasing your AOV without harming your, your conversion rate because they can see that they can still buy the single version of the product. A lot of times people will also throw in bonuses. so. If it was supplements, maybe you get a, a, a travel case or maybe you get um, a mixer cup or whatever it is. There's ways that you can incentivize taking the largest quantity possible and not everybody's gonna take it, but if enough people take it, it's going to bring up your overall average order value high enough that it offsets the lower AOV on the smaller bundles. So if you can get enough people taking that and the dollar input is high enough, you could potentially double your AOV from 50 to $100, which again, if we didn't change any of the other metrics in the original example I would get, gave you, that would bring you to a one times row as or $2,000 in revenue off of the $2,000 spent. When you layer in the other two frameworks, now you've got a profitable business, but I'm not quite done yet on AOV. So Volume incentivization is a huge 
driver of increased AOV. But the second thing, the second thing is making sure that you have one click upsells set up, whether you use Zipify's one click upsell or rebuy or whatever the product is, you want to make sure that you optimize the upsell for each version of the three options that you're giving consumers to purchase. So if it's one, three, and 12, the people who buy 12 are much more likely to take a larger second upsell. And then if they're not interested in the upsell, you, you should be creating alternate paths with downsells. You should be able to, at the absolute minimum, have a 10% take in your, your one-click upsell funnels absolute minimum and that can again big time increase your average order value and the really great thing about one click upsells is the main purchase is already complete they've already bought the item that they were looking at and there's no risk of having the person going and needing to do additional research before they make their initial purchase this is a, a one click upsell is a uh, an offer that pops up after the sale is complete it then modifies the existing order and adds the additional product to it. Great way to quickly boost your average order value. If you don't know what you should be upselling the consumer to, sell them more of what they've already bought because you know they believe in that idea and they're there for it. Most people, you're going to get the highest take rate on more of what they've already bought. And the third framework or lever that you have inside of your business to scale your Facebook ads this one's actually not so much on your business. This one actually is inside of your Facebook ad account. And it's to improve the performance of the creatives you already have. So again, I'm going to use the initial example again. But if you can increase your click-through rate from relevant click-through rate, that's important. You don't want to you don't want to trick people into clicking. But if you can increase your relevant click-through rate from 1% to 2% using the initial example, you will have instantly moved your return on ad spend from 0.5 to 1%. You couple that with the two things that I just spoke about before this and your business should be rocking. So before before you go and start jumping around your ad account, trying to, to, to figure out what you should be tweaking, I'm gonna go back to what I said in the first point is that you need to make sure that you have product market fit, understand your value props and who you're communicating to. That is going to be the beginning of my creative framework. You have one avatar, and one core problem per creative matrix. This creative matrix is fundamentally a spreadsheet that covers the different levels of consumer awareness, the different formats, so video and images, and maybe just depending on if you wanna add those in there. And then on the solution aware level, having creatives for each of the core benefits. In the product aware, having uh, creatives for each of the objections that need busting. And in the most aware phase, having creatives for uh, the offers that are tied to that product. In this spreadsheet, if you label all of your ads correctly so that you can tell which ad belongs in which category, you should see this cascade effect. Like depending on whether you're starting at solution aware or problem aware, your CPAs for each category should go down. So your most aware ads should have the lowest CPAs and your uh, problem aware or unaware ads should be the highest. Now, if you remove any of those creatives higher up the funnel, over time you will see negative consequences on your lower funnel ads because they are feeding eyeballs and creating awareness that drives down your CPAs. So what I like to do is make sure that I have creatives for both video and images in all of these boxes. I can then look at my account and, and say, okay, which uh, level of awareness and which benefit or, or uh, objection that needs to be up overcome or where exactly are we weak? And we should start testing creatives that cover that angle and fix it instead of just randomly trying to hit home runs, trying to nail one video ad that, that solves all the, all the world's problems. I like to label my videos based on where they start because most videos will take you from, you know, solution aware to product aware to most aware. So you should have videos that start at product aware that are busting objections and aren't making people go through the things that people who are at solution aware need to make a purchase. 
having this matrix will make your life so much easier because you you know exactly what you need to work on when you need to work on it so that your machine your 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 grid is going to give you optimal performance the other major low-hanging fruit that i like to look at when uh, i'm going through an ad account is what is the relevant hook rate on any particular piece of creative this is only going to apply to video ads of course but if you have some creative that's giving you fairly solid returns or, or the higher performance in your account and you look at the hook rate which is three second video views divided by impressions if your hook rate is less than 40 percent i would go and consider testing three four five new hooks for that video the goal is to get over 40 percent relevant hook rate and when i say by relevant hook rate is you don't want to put like a picture of a girl in a bikini to suck guys into watching an ad for a video that's about uh, a product for breastfeeding mothers. It's just, you're attracting the wrong person to the creative. So you wanna make sure that the hook is relevant to the avatar, which you determined in your product market fit test. If you can push that over 40%, you're from whatever, say it's working at 20%, you are going to get such a huge improvement in conversion rate. Not in conversion rate, but your CPC should come down. Your conversion rate should stay close to what it already was and you should get close to double the output if you go from 20 to 40%. The other thing that's really easy to do with your image ads, look for ads that are performing decently well and make iterations of those. The lowest hanging fruit is simply changing a headline. So if you've got an image ad, there's like text overlaid on it, change the headline, test out different things. Because sometimes if you've read the book, Great Leads by, uh, I guess, Mark, Mark Masterson, oftentimes the largest impacting item in direct response is the headline. And the final thing, and this is something that I see so many brands doing, it's incredible. They use the same copy on every single piece of creative, every single one. Doesn't matter what level of awareness the consumer is at. All of these different pieces of creative just have like five benefits listed, some sort of like money back guarantee, and then the same headline over and over and over and over again. People need different information based on what level of awareness they're at. Test those pieces of copy, both the body copy, the headline, test it, test the crap out of it. And then one of the things that I mentioned earlier in this video is that you need to be sending people to the right page based on that level of awareness. So if you're sending everybody to your homepage or your PDP or a lander, regardless of where they are on the level of consumer awareness or how you're communicate, communicating to them, Stop doing that. Start testing, sending them to the page that is geared towards where they are in their journey. And you will see much better results. If you like this video, take a look at this video above. I'd go over what I would do if I was trying to start a new brand from scratch and get it to 100 million revenue as quickly as possible.